Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Vim. Now, you might say, why am I taking a look at Vim? We have Visual Studio Code and other editors like that. Well, the reason why I want to take a quick look at Vim, that's because at some point or another, as a full stack developer or backend developer, you will come across Vim. You know, there are other like text-based editors like Nano, but Vim is a really big one. And at some point you're probably gonna come across Vim and you do not wanna be in the situation trying to make some kind of configuration to a server and can't go wrong and you don't know Vim. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a quick look at Vim. And also if you're like me, mainly using Windows, I actually didn't know, but Vim actually runs on Windows as well. It runs on Mac as well, you know, because you mainly think like Vim, that's like a Linux server tool, not really something we ever have to touch. Well guys, no, mainly Mainly not on Windows, we don't really have to use Vim, but like I said, at some point when you're on Linux, when you're configuring some server, you will most likely come across a Vim or something similar like Nano. And all I've done guys is just install the Windows version here. Just click the installer and then click, click, click. And then a bunch of applications was installed. And you can see that if you want to download them for Mac and Linux, then there's also download links here. Now, after the installation process was done, I got all of these different applications installed and there's a lot. So the first one in here is Vim and that's going to be your normal Vim. We can try to open it and you know, it's just going to be your normal Vim. And I haven't really played around with that one. Um, but there's this really cool one called GVim. Now you can see that there's also one called GVim read only and GVim easy. Now I would recommend opening the GVim easy because that one will load some configurations for you, which will allow you to use things like control S to save. So if you are going to be editing something, I would recommend starting with this one here because that will make sure that you can run control S. Now you can see that it opens pretty much like any other editor and you can see the text is very small. So you guys won't actually be able to see it. So we can just go ahead and go over here to edit and then go down to the font here in the bottom and then we can just go ahead and change it. I will say 20 for this example here. Now, one annoying thing about this is that these settings does not persist, which is a, a bit annoying. Now you can go ahead and set this in some kind of configuration file. I just have not been able to find a configuration file. I will leave an article down below, but essentially it's fine if you're not doing YouTube and stuff like that, that the text size is actually fine. It's pretty small, but you know, for most computers it's gonna be fine. But you can see here, we opened a document. Now you can see that I can just type Normally in Vim, you do want to go ahead and press the I button to enter insert mode. Now in the easy version, you do not have to do that. You can just go ahead and type like any other editor. So you can slowly get familiar with Vim without just jumping into Vim directly. So if you don't know the Vim world, essentially there's like three different modes. There's normal mode, there is insert mode and there's command mode. So the normal mode, you can just look around, but you can't edit anything and you can't run any commands. But if you press the I button, then you will enter insert mode and then you can actually go ahead and like change stuff and write stuff and do all your normal editing. And if you press the exit button, then you will enter command mode. Now you can see we can't actually enter command mode in the easy version. You can see we just get this Windows error sound. Now let's go into the normal GVim so I can show you some of the commands. Cause it's actually pretty simple. So let's go into GVim here, just a normal version. And you can see that the text is small again. So let's go to edit font and type 20. Now let me try to type. You can see that I cannot type. So now I can because I pressed the I button by accident, but so let's actually enter that mode again. So now you can see I cannot write, but because I press the I, I continuously keep pressing the I key because I'm mashing random buttons and then I press the I key. Uh, kind of wondering why I can suddenly edit something. And you can see it down here in the corner, you can see that I'm in insert mode. So I can go ahead and type. Into enter command mode, press exit. Now you can see that we are in that normal mode thing, but all you want to go ahead and do is press this symbol here which is shift and then I have no idea what that's named, but that thing. And then you can go ahead and write a few different commands. Now you can see the commands up here in the file menu. You can see E for open and you can see W for uh, write. And then there's just safe as. So we can actually try this. So we'll just go ahead and write this and it will say, we, okay, it's probably because it wants us to say which name we should save it as. Like I said, guys, I'm new to this as well. So let's go ahead and write, I don't know, test.txt. 
There you go. That has saved text.txt. Now I've actually no idea where it saved it at. Probably like the root directory. But you can see it's fairly simple. There's a few other commands you can run. You can run write here, which will just write the file. And you can run that will write and quit the file. And this will write write and quit the file forcefully, which actually doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But if you do like this here, then this does make sense because this will just quit the application. Because if you do this, you actually won't quit the application if there's unsafe changes. But if you do this, then it will actually go ahead and just quit anyways. And you will lose your data. And we can go ahead and run this and you can see that that just closes Gmail. Now, um, when you develop in Vim, you're going to be pretty slow in the beginning because Vim is actually shortcut based. If you do not know the Vim commands, then you are not really able to use Vim efficiently. So if you know your way around Vim, then you can be really, really, really fast at Vim. Now, this is why I would not recommend this for front end developer. Now you can get auto completion and stuff like that, but I would not recommend Vim as like a day to day code editor, just simply because you will have to do a lot of tinkering to get it to be like Visual Studio Code and it can be quite fragile. Now you can get an extension for Visual Studio Code, which is a Vim extension, which will add some of the capability of Vim into Visual Studio Code. So that's another editor you could try to just get in the habit of using Vim a little bit. So you are prepared when you are in the situation where you need to use it. But GVim is also a really solid choice. You know, I'm not saying you should do like all of your editing in here, but guys, I didn't want this to turn out to such a rambly video. So I will go ahead and end it here, guys. And I hope that you have taken some something away from this video. I hope that you will go ahead and try Vim. And like I said, I would only recommend it for backend and full stack because as a front end, you're not really gonna be in any situation where you will be needing to use Vim. I mean, it's a neat skill to learn anyways, but you're not really gonna be needing it. Um, So yeah, there's not really any point to learn it. Unless you have a really slow computer, then maybe Vim might be the only thing that runs on your computer. But that was everything for today and hopefully see you in the next one. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here. And hopefully I see you in the next one.